Hi, this is James, and I'd like to welcome you to the second installment of my video series on how I read a nine card Lenormand layout. So this video series was once again inspired by some of my viewers who asked me if I would show how I read a nine card layout. So in the previous installment of this video series, you got to watch me use what I call the searching for the significator method where we went through the deck we picked out a significator card and we looked at the cards that were surrounding it. We looked at the four cards that came before it and after it and we read those as a nine card layout. In this video installment we're going to be doing a variation of that same theme only instead of searching for a significator card we're going to be searching for a topic card. So we're going to go through the deck we're going to pick out a topic card and once again we're going to look at the four cards that come before it and after it and read those as a nine card layout. So now that I talked about the process, the deck that's going to be assisting me for this video is the Mystical Lenormand. It is by Regula Elizabeth Feichter. The artwork is by Urban Troush, and it is published by AGM. So now that I've introduced the deck, let's get to the table and take a closer look at the cards that are going to be making up this particular nine card reading. And here we are with the cards on the table. And once again, the deck that I'm going to be using for this particular video is the Mystical Lenormand. So I'm going to take the deck in hand and I'm going to take a moment and shuffle the cards. And as I shuffle the cards, I'm going to be setting an intention for this reading, just as I did with the last one. So since I talked about a romantic relationship in the previous segment, I think I'm going to switch it up. And this time we'll look at something having to do with a job-related situation. So let's say this time we have a man, and we'll call him Carl. So Carl is a physical laborer or manual laborer. He works with his hands. So the company that he works for right now is going through a downsizing. And so Carl has now been seeing um, the work that he has been doing being outsourced and being done with technology. So some machinery is now doing the work that used to be done by people. So Carl is now concerned with his place at the company going forward. So we're going to do a reading with that in mind. Now instead of using the gentleman as a significator, this video we're going to be doing a topic card. So since I described the scenario the way I did, the topic card that's coming to mind for me is Anchor. And this is why. First for me, Anchor is a work card. And so we have a work related situation. Anchor is also long-term work for me. And it can also represent work that is manual or physical in nature. Because for me, Anchor represents hard work. But it's also work that provides some sort of stability and security and that is the undercurrent of Carl's question. Because now, with the situation being what it is, his sense of stability and security is now being affected or impacted. So now that we've talked about the scenario, I'm going to go ahead and cut the cards. And just as I did in a previous video, I cut the cards away because the question is not about me. So now just as we did the last time, I'll turn the deck over and the card we're going to be looking for is going to be Anchor because that is the topic. So we're going to go through the cards. Until we get to anchor.
Now there's a strong possibility that Anchor could be at the bottom of the deck. And there's that, okay. So now here we have Anchor at the bottom of the deck. So what I do in this particular case, then the all the cards that were on top of anchor now we take the four cards right we take the four cards that came before anchor so we have one two three four these are the four cards then what i do is i take this this deck put it under anchor right so we have anchor then starting over, we have one, two, three, four. And then I put that aside, right? So again, now we have the four cards that technically become after anchor, anchor, and then the cards that came before. So now again, as I said in the previous video, if you have a different way of getting your cards, you can go ahead and do that. But again, just like I said in the previous video, I go from top to bottom. So literally anchor was on the bottom, so the cards that you know, uh, we're on top of Anchor, start the process all over again. So that's why I picked the cards that were um, from the top of the deck, from the very top of the deck. So now that we have our cards, I'm going to take a moment and readjust the camera and lay the cards out. And here we are with the nine cards laid out. And so now going back to the center, here we have Anchor, which is a topic card because the question involves Carl and his job and the scenario remember is that he is concerned about his stability and security with the company because now the company is downsizing and work is being outsourced and being done with machinery and so now his place at the company he feels is in question right so that's the scenario so that's going with anchor anchor is my long-term work card it also represents manual labor, physical labor, work that we do that uh, has become routine and does to some extent give us a sense of stability and security. And so now the cards that came before Anchor were Clouds, Stork, Snake, and Crossroads. And then the cards that came after Anchor were Ship, Whip, Tree, and rounding out the nine cards is gentlemen, which is very interesting to see because the scenario uh, has a man involved in it, Carl. So this is very interesting to see. And again, I love the way the cards have been laid out. Again, this was a scenario that I just threw out off the top of my head. And again, once, once again, just like in the previous video, I'm finding validation with just the cards that have shown up. So going with the scenario, I tend to, after I identify what the focus is, I look at the card that's opening up the nine card. And here we have clouds, the most challenging card in the deck to show up. And so it's opening up because Carl's in a place of uncertainty about his position with the company going forward. So clouds is like the perfect card to have here because it represents um, uncertainty, it represents doubt, it represents confusion, you know, something not being clear. So that's perfect to see. And then the ending card or the card that closes things out is the gentleman card. And so here we have the significator card and this represents Carl. And so now if we go with corners and we read the corners, we have clowns, and gentlemen, which represents an uncertain man, a confused man, a man who's unsure about things. So this fits the scenario perfectly, right? But as a closing card, it could suggest that there is something that Carl can do about his situation or that the future or how things end up is really in his hands. Now we don't have another card next to gentlemen to kind of give us any indication, but reading the reading the the box as it is now it says that there is something that Carl possibly can do 
with his situation like it's saying to like the power there is some sort of power in his hands like the power is in his hands to do something he may be looking at it from a place of clouds as not having any power but there may be something that he can do in terms of how this situation is going to be resolved right so there's that and so now in this particular case what i would do is i would read the columns from left to right so this column will represent the past this column will represent the present and this column will represent the future because the focus card is not a significator card so i don't read that with direction in mind right so that's how i would read the column so now let's take a closer look at the columns starting with the column on the far left so now taking a look at the column on the far left which represents a past we once again we have clouds we have the crossroads and we have whip so again, clouds can represent uncertainty, can represent confusion, something not being clear. Crossroads for me is a card of decisions, right? So it could be, you know, confusion regarding choices that have been made in the past. Now remember, this is the past. So there could be some sort of confusion or uncertainty about choices that have been made, right? It could also be confusion and uncertainty about the direction because part of it Part of the question for Carl was about where is the company going moving forward? You know, what is, what's going on with this job from this point forward? So there is some sort of uncertainty or question about the direction. You know, it could also be too, like there's some uncertainty and some confusion about options. You know, because Crossroads for me represents choices, it represents options, it represents alternatives, things like that. So there could be some sort of uncertainty or confusion about options and alternatives. But since this is in the past, my first go-to would be about like there's some sort of confusion or uncertainty about choices that have been made. There's that. And then Whip is a card that can represent conflict. Right, so in a, in a job scenario, whip can represent layoffs. You know, and if jobs have been outsourced and if jobs are being um, taken over by um, machinery and technology, then that would make sense. And remember, part of the scenario was downsizing. Right? So there's that as well. Now, if we pair crossroads and whip, Whip is a card that can represent repetitive activity. So here we have repeated choices. You know, choices that have been made again and again and again. So if we read the line, it could be confusion or uncertainty about repetitive choices. This could be confusion and uncertainty about choices being made regarding layoffs. You know, it could also be, too, confusion and uncertainty about decisions regarding job training. I tend to look at WIP as a card that can represent um, training on the job training. And the other thing about WIP that I'm, now that I'm looking at it, it could also be about discipline. So it could be like disciplinary action and could be some sort of uncertainty and confusion about choices being made regarding um, disciplinary action. You know, it could also be about, if we go with the idea here that whip is a card that can represent conflict and strife, then it could be about confusion and uncertainty about choices that have been made that have led to conflict and strife. So those are some possibilities with this column. And so now we'll take a look at the next column which represents the present. And now taking a look at the column that represents the present, we have stork, we have anchor, and we have tree. Right? So the first thing with stork, stork represents change. So here we are, we have acknowledged that there has been some uh, changes taking place at the company. So with anchor being work, pairing stork 
and anchor, we have work changes, you know, and the powers that be are making these changes because they believe that it would improve things. So there could be changes at work to improve things. You know, now for the people who have been let go, going back to WIP about being layoffs possibly, for the people who, who have been let go, the change isn't so positive, but maybe for the company, they consider what they're doing to be um, positive improvements. You know, because store can imply you know, changes being made for the better, something being made um, positive or something that's meant to improve a situation. Right, now the other thing that's coming to me in the moment, sometimes store can represent a move. So if we go with the idea of um, relocation, then we have here relocation of work. And that would make sense if we go with the idea about work being outsourced, right? So that's being reflected in the cards as well. And then if we go one card down to tree, tree is a card that can represent health, it could represent healing, it could represent something that is about growth and development. So here we are with the undercurrent. So it, let's say like these choices are being made going back to crossroads with the intention of improving things it could be designed with the health of the company in mind, right? So it's to make the company healthier to some degree. You know, if we go with the idea here that work is being relocated, then this card here for me, one of my chief meetings for Tree is about something that's branching out, right? So this card here could be about like some sort of extension. You know, so it could be here even, let's say like the people who are still with the company, they have been given some sort of extension. They haven't been let go yet. You know, so they, they've been given some sort of extension. But I'm going to read this as, you know, work has been relocated with the in clear intention on making the company healthier. And that would be the improvement going back to store. So that's how I would take a look at the middle column. So now let's shift gears and move on to the column that can represent the future. And so now taking a look at the column that represents the future, we have snake, we have ship, and we have gentleman. So it's very interesting to note that we have snake once again in our reading. We also had this card in the previous reading. So if you saw that reading, then you know that one of my chief go-to meanings for snake is complication, right? So there's that. So we have complication. We have something that is a long and winding process. That's another form of a meaning for me for snake. Could also represent uh, something that becomes entangled. So here we have in the future, we have some sort of complication um, coming onto the scene, right? So there's that. And now this would make sense with the next card, ship. Ship for me can represent a commercial venture. And so here we are, we're talking about the company. So the company is a form of a commercial venture, right? And so here we have ship representing the commercial venture. It can also represent progress, advancement, and movement because a ship is uh, symbolic of travel, right? So there could be some sort of complication going forward in the future with that. So one of the complications could be involving the outsourcing. We could go with ship here as saying something that's going abroad or something that's you know going um, foreign so it could be like part of the work. Now, remember, we said the work was being outsourced, right? We have to, some cards that represent that. Remember the relocation of work? Well, here with ship, it could be saying too, like the work is being outsourced. It's being shipped out overseas. 
you know, the work is being done abroad now, things of that nature. So there's that. And that's going to become more complex with Snake as time goes on. And the complexity might be revolving around the more technological aspects of the work that's um, being done, you know, because there are two things. The work was being outsourced, but there's also the technology aspect that I mentioned in the scenario, right? So Snake could be the complication with that, right? And it could also be, too, Snake is a card for me that can represent, you know, um, people not being very forthcoming. So it could be like the powers that be at the company, you know, may not be totally forthcoming in terms of the future of the company or the future of the people who are still remaining with the company. And that would make sense, especially with the significator, the gentleman, which is, represents Carl here in this column, right? So Carl may be thinking about, you know, what's going to happen in the future going forward because ship is above him. And remember, I said for me that I tend to read the cards that are above a significator card is like what's on the person's mind. So this whole scenario would make sense because keeping with the context of the question, Carl asked about his place with the company going forward in the future. And so this represents his his thoughts about that. That's, it's just reinforcing that this is on his mind. So we could read this as, you know, complication going forward with the commercial venture for the man in the future. Right? So that's how I would read this column. And so now we'll take a moment to look at the rows next. And so now taking a look at the rows, starting with the top row, we have clowns, we have stork, and we have snake. So repeating some of the keywords that I've already used, looking at the columns, clouds again for me would represent uncertainty and confusion. And then we have stork. Stork would be about change or improvement. And then we have snake, and so snake would be about complication. So reading the row, a possibility here could be uncertainty about changes lead to complications, right? Because we have uncertainty with clouds, change with stork, and complication with snake. So again, that's uncertainty about changes lead to complications. Right now for the middle row, we have crossroads, anchor and ship, right? So some of the keywords again, I would go with choices, options, alternatives, decisions for crossroads. Anchor, of course, is our topic. So we, this is going to be about work and then ship can represent a commercial venture. It could represent a journey, it could represent something foreign abroad or overseas. So an option going with crossroads for reading this row could be the decision for work to be shipped out. Right? Because again, crossroads is about decisions. Anchor is about work. And then ship could also be about literal shipping or something being shipped out because I tend to read this as shipping or shipments or something being shipped out. So that's a way that I would read this row. And again, that would fit the context of the situation. All of these so far are keeping with the context of the situation as Carl has presented it to us, right? And then for the bottom row, we have whip, tree, and gentleman. So now the interesting thing here to note is that the gentleman card has the tree card and the whip card behind him. So these represent the past if we go with direction in mind, right? So here in the past could be whip could be a card that could represent and I'm going with the visual here because one of my um, keyword associations for whip is anger and being angry. So it could say too like when this first went down, Carl was very angry. Right. And with the visual, he may have been beating himself up. 
maybe for being in this space now, you know, with the downsizing when it first started happening, maybe he was beating himself up or maybe he was very angry about the situation. So there's that. And then tree, of course, is a card that can represent health and healing, but it could also represent being with the company for a long time. Remember now, anchor can represent something long term, but the tree can also represent, you know, um, something that has taken a long time to grow. So with Carl, this could be about Carl, like he's been there for a long time at this company. You know, he's put in a lot of time, you know, and so maybe he's upset with the idea of being let go possibly because he's looking at it from the place of like, I've been here all this time. He may actually have been one of the people who actually has been with the company since its inception. If you go with the idea that tree can represent roots or foundation, right? So maybe he's played a large part in the company's growth and development. And so that, that may be one of the reasons why he's actually still there, but he still may be angry at the idea of possibly being let go because he's looking at it from a place of, I've been here for a very long time. So there's that. Now the other thing here, and this may be playing into maybe a bit about the whole security and stability aspect of anchor in terms of the job. Here we have the possibility of a health conflict. If we go with the idea that whip represents conflict and tree represents health and healing, Carl at this point at this stage in his life with Tree, he could be experiencing some sort of health conflict, you know, and, you know, maybe being with the company for such a, a long time, you know, being almost like a fixture, you know, maybe he's at this place now where he's um, experiencing a possible health challenge and, you know, that may be playing into like the idea of having benefits. And so how's that going to be affected or impacted if he's suddenly let go? that kind of thing. But I noticed that when I was looking at these cards as a possibility of a health conflict for the man, right? But I'm going to go with it that, you know, he's possibly been angry in the past, you know, about being in this space where he he's even having to worry about this, that this even has to be a thing that he's concerned about, especially if he's been with the company for a long period of time. So that is how I would read the rose. And so now we'll take a look at the final technique that I would use, and that is the diamond. And for this last segment of this particular video installment, we'll take a look at the diamond. So for the diamond, we have stork, we have crossroads, we have tree, we have ship, and then leads us back to stork. So what I do is when I work with the diamond, I do them a pair at a time working my way around. And the idea here with the diamond is, it can do one or two things. It can give you some new information that the other combinations hasn't given you yet, or it will restate and repeat some of the other messages you've already received. So either way, it serves a purpose. If you get new information, that's great. You can take that into account. But if it restates and gives you repetitive message, that's a form of validating and confirming your previous insights, right? So going with that, we have storks and crossroads as the first pairing. So here I would read that as changes going with stork that have been decided upon, going with crossroads being about decisions being made, right? Then next we have crossroads and tree. So we have a couple of scenarios here with this. We could go with the idea here about long term because tree can represent something that takes a long time to grow and develop. So we have long-term choices and options. If we go with the idea that tree can represent the health of the company, let's say, then here we have healthy choices and healthy options. And then another possibility here could be decisions going with crossroads for long-term growth and development, and that would be tree. Now the next pairing would be tree and ship. So I would look at this as a possibility of talking about the branching out of the company internationally and keeping with that, that would make sense if we go with the idea that um, the idea about work being shipped out 
um, work being now sent over seas or abroad or done uh, foreign and, uh, in foreign lands so there's that possibility so branching out internationally and that would make sense too if we go back to the idea that tree can represent long-term growth and development so that may be some of the choices being made to improve the company might be more of an international kind of thing right and then the last possibility here we have ship and stork so if we go with the idea here that ship can represent a commercial venture and stork represents improvement then we could see like the choices that have been made with the company could be that the commercial venture the company itself improves right so that's how I would look at the diamond and on that note I'll go ahead and end the video here so I'm James and Mitchell and as I close I'd like to thank you for sharing space here with me in this particular video installment and I look forward to sharing the same space with you again in our next video installment where we'll be taking a look at another nine card reading where we do it randomly which means that we don't go through the deck and we don't pick out a significator card or a topic card we let the Lenormand decide what the focus card is going to be so until then I'm hoping that you have a wonderful day and take care